Okay. I'm Christian Laker. 1992, Duke, Kentucky. Kentucky's up by one. Christian's got the ball. Two seconds left. He shoots a beautiful turnaround jumper. Off the ground! Gets his own rebound. Loose ball! Laker goes great goal! Get them! Duke wins game of the century! And that's the way it happened! Well, almost. Duke has four NCAA championships, been to the championship game 10 times, and has appeared in the final four 15 times. On the other hand, North Carolina has five NCAA championships, appeared in nine championship games, and has appeared in 18 final fours. Tobacco Road is the eight miles that separate these two campuses. The Duke and North Carolina rivalry is probably one of the greatest in the history of collegiate and professional sports. The history and rivalry of Duke and North Carolina started back in 1920 and has been going hard for almost 90 years. Some call the rivalry the Battle of the Blues or even Tobacco Road. Duke and Carolina shares a winning tradition an enormous amount of pride and pure hatred for each other. On my way to visit NC State recruit C.J. Leslie, I had to make a Carolina pit stop to visit the campuses of both Duke and North Carolina. At Duke, I ran into the infamous Cameron Crazies as they battled high gusts of wind, failing tents, and the frigid cold February air in order to get the best seat in Cameron Indoor Stadium for the big game against North Carolina. It was amazing. I was truly on hollow ground. Kayville is a place that anyone outside of North Carolina rarely has the opportunity to visit. And although this video does not fit with the tradition of high school hopeful products, I will be doing you a disservice if I decided to keep this experience all to myself. We've been out here since January 23rd. Are you serious? Yes, sir. For what, for this particular game? Uh, well, for the Carolina game next week. Uh, it's so hard to get tickets for the games that, uh, you know, we line up out here months in advance. Uh, years past, we've lined up as early as December for it. But uh, this year, we, uh, the basketball office decided that they wanted to make it a little bit more, a uh, little bit more friendly, a little bit more uh, focused on the game. So we waited until mid-January. It's cold out here. here. It's how do, how, how do you guys fare out? Uh, you know, you, you bundle you bundle up and uh, you get used to it. You, you learn how to how to stay warm and how to avoid the wind. I, mean, I, I think we're going to be the favorites, but it's a rivalry game. Anything can happen. You know, in '94 we were terrible, and they were they had one of the one of their better teams, and we forced double overtime on Capel's shot. You know, so I don't think I don't think anybody here is overlooking this game. We we're expecting them to bring everything they've got. And, uh, I think it's going to be good. You know, throughout the day, they they want us to go to class, obviously. So, only one person from each group of twelve has to be out here during the day, so that we can go to class. And six people have to be here at night. Um, so, you know, we come and we you know can. There's wireless in Kville. We you know can plug into the wall and we can do our homework. But uh, you know, and then the rest of the time we just come out here, hang out, have a good time. How do you guys choose this group of twelve? How does that happen? Yeah. Um, it depends. You know, freshman year is most of the time the people in your dorm, just whoever you know. And as it goes on, it you find people who are willing to to be as crazy and as stupid as you are. I mean, it's it's pretty tough. I mean, some people have been here literally since uh, this is before the semester started, and some people started without without tents even, just with tarps. But uh, I guess it just goes to show. I mean, how dedicated. Duke students are to Duke basketball. Definitely, they, they come out here at times and they they uh, sign autographs to take pictures with the tenors out here, and they definitely understand. I mean, that is tough, and they really appreciate it. Absolutely, so, on and off the court. I mean, I think it's huge. Growing up, uh, living in North Carolina as long as I have about 16 years, I know that it's huge. I mean, it's, only, it's honestly the only college rivalry I really knew about growing up. And uh, I mean, it's it's really strong in North Carolina, and I'd say a lot of people would uh, underestimate the the depth of the rivalry, but it's big. Not too long. We have we have tent shifts, and uh, there are different levels of tenting. There's black tenting, blue tenting, and white tenting. White tenting is kind of the lightest, and uh, I just decided to, to join a group of friends 
as they started attending. So, I mean, I just have like a two hour shift right now. We started attending last week. But, uh, but yeah, but some people have started, I mean, it's, it's just different levels. So. I mean, crazy. This, this, is, this is one thing, but coming here about like three hours before the game in Kville at night, it's huge. It's huge. It's something special, honestly. So now explain the, the levels of tenting. I heard blue, white, and black. black. Yeah, black, black tenting people. They're crazy. Um, they, they're out here forever. They, they start, I think, right after uh, we get back from winter break, like straight to their tent. And it's not even a tent. They sleep under tarps. Um, I think until blue tenting starts, I'm not really sure. Um, they sleep under just a tarp. So it goes black, and then blue, and then white. And I think the black tending groups are smaller too. So even after the crazy under the tarp living ends, they still have to do more hours than everybody else because they're fewer. So you guys get a chance to see the players and the players ever come out and hang out with you guys? Yeah, um, numbers that indicate our, uh, our place in line, basically. Because um, these aren't in order. You know, you just tent, put your tent wherever. And um, if your number corresponds to their jersey number, they'll come and visit you. Unfortunately, we're 78, so that's not going to happen. Wait, wait. <laughs> Our tent is fucked up, too. <laughs> it's no secret. Duke University has the best student section in the entire country. And so would argue, and rightfully so, about which school produces the best college players. And that sometimes you would have to give the nod to Duke University. But if we're talking about who builds and produces the best NBA players, hands down, North Carolina is a school of choice.